Hello everyone and welcome to Loretta. I was man- meaning to get to this game for a long time. Haven't been able to. In this one you all play as a accomplice to a killer. And oh my god, things go wrong so much. The games even take place in United States of America in 1947. To reflect the reality of the time, Loretta contains subject matter that may of find offensive My name is Loretta Liu Harris. My friends call me Laura. I am 38 years old. I was born in a small town in the south that you probably never heard of. The moment I turned 16, I ran away to the east coast. I am an unemployed anthropologist and a mediocre housewife. A few months ago, my husband and I moved to a farm that he got from his parents. Life here ain't exactly simple, but we got we get by all the same. Up until two weeks ago, anyway, when Walter up and disappeared without a trace. So my husband has vanished and disappeared. Chambers, Miss Harris, Miss Harris, I'm friend Chambers. I'm looking for your husband. You from the police? Now I already talked to to the sheriff. I ain't got nothing more to say, no, ma'am. I'm leading a private investigation. There are some people from New York, important people, who really like to have a word with Mr. Harris. Well, tell him to get in line. And who are these important people? I didn't catch your last name. Yeah, I see, ma'am. Still, I would appreciate it if you could spare a moment of your time for me. May I, if I come in? Don't invite a stranger into your home. He wipes his neck with a handkerchief. You've got a, oh, a lovely house. Holy hell, it's decrepit as all hell. Oh, a lovely house, ma'am. Don't bother. I can't stand this place either. Is this Mr. Harris's house? His parents. You're not from around here, are you? Or New York, for that matter. Don't test my hospitality. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend. I'm paid to ask question, you know. But my only concern is Mr. Harris. Mainly, I need to know if he's alive. Or dead. I wonder if it's gonna turn out like a uh, birdhouse lane, ma'am. How long will Mr. Harris gone for? Must have been quite a journey getting down here, Mr. Chambers. We like something to drink. Honestly, I was hoping you'd ask. The kitchen's just down the hall. Did you just told the detective to? You're not gonna answer that. Hello, hello. Can I talk to Mr. Harris, please? Well, he can't come. Who's calling? This is Patrick Filsgeld from Atlantic Press Publishing House. Would you kindly put Mr. Harris on the phone? It's extremely urgent. Mr. Harris ain't available. He ain't here. Well, what time will he be back, Miss? What is this? Is about his book. We're still waiting for him to send the second half. The contracts are ready, but Miss, could you please pass? Okay, they hung up. It happens sometimes. Guy can teleport, huh? Feral lemonade is all I can offer. Just water would be fine with me, ma'am. 
I am a tad parched from a long drive. Why is there a sickle on the door? Tell me, ma'am. Your husband. Did he happen to leave some kind of note? Maybe a letter. He didn't. At least I ain't found nothing if he did. Neither did the sheriff's man. Alright, got radio. Poison. Why? What? There's a real nice almond smell here. Am I gonna try to kill him? What am I doing? An April furniture catalog. It's got all the uh, nuclear family could need. It's got all a nuclear family could need. How are things with the novel? Did Mr. Harris finish it? Is Mr. Wallace interested in that too? No, ma'am. Just curious. Real pity that the true work of a detective isn't all that like stuff your husband writes about. You know, it's a hard-boiled detective story. It's the law of the genre, Mr. Chambers. Okay, I got the glass. The humidity is killing me. I don't think it's been this hard since spring of 39. What's that music coming from? The field? Farmers? Walter rents out the land. Guess the music helps them pass time. So I linger on Laura's hips. She pretends not to notice. Wait, is the game telling me I can kill the guy? Hey, what the hell? That's a fast bitch. I shouldn't have done that. He shot me. He had no choice. Poisoning a man right in front of his very eyes wasn't the brightest idea I ever had. Who would have noticed? This is how my story ends. He wants to f me so hard, doesn't he? Quite the shame for a fine lady like yourself to be stuck out in a place like this. There's your water. You're too kind. Thank you. He dries his lips on his sleeve. How much land have you got there, ma'am? Sixty or so acres? He whistles. Don't get too excited. It was m mortgaged a long while back. May I may I take a look at the yard? Suit yourself. What in the... Is that the pipes? Son of a... Get some plumbing installed. What do you know? And what do you know? Sorry. I need to go down into the basement. Need a hand? Nah. No need to trouble yourself. Sides. Sides. What... Sides, you want to you wanted to look around the place, didn't you? It's damp and dark down in the basement. Too damp and too dark. Smells like mold. Just like chamber's breath actually. I ca I can hardly find a water the water pipes. At first glance everything seems to be in order. But there's a weird buzzing. The sound coming from him. I turn around and head back upstairs. It's dark, I don't think. Looks like Chambers went out in the yard. Okay, I can't interact with anything right now. Tell me, Mr. Harris. Tell me, Mrs. Harris. Where do you think your husband might be? Got any ideas? Maybe he went back to New York? He's in the well. Why are these red? Go! Uh, what the hell, game? Are you are you tempting me? He's in the well. Begging your pardon. My name is Loretta. Friends call me Laura. I'm an unemployed housewife, stuck in a hellhole, with nothing but some and fucking weed. Two weeks ago, I killed my husband. I'm not turning back. I did what I wanted to do. I don't know what this is all about, but okay.
I ain't trying to make excuses, but I think I gotta tell my story from the beginning. But it ain't looking to be forgiven by a gentleman of the jury. I know that's impossible now, but I wanna give a chance to whoever's gonna read this to maybe understand me. You see, my relationship with Walter started to fall apart long before the day he died, long before we moved into this goddamn farm. I even liked it at the start. Trading the bus and city life for a humble one out in the country. Of course, wishful thinking all it was. Women don't get much choice in this world. Take enough wrong turns and before you know it, you are low class. And I was finally starting to see that all my turns were the wrong ones too. So you're back in the farm? So this that's the well. An old well, I don't know why, but it gives me the creep. We never use it. Okay. Another broken, creaky step. Nails sticking out, waiting for a right moment to finally jab into my leg. I asked Walter to fix it. Not that did any good. Walter wasn't a bad person. He almost never drank, and even when he did, he never got violent. In all our years together, he only hit me that one time, and he felt awful about it afterwards. Still, everything about him was starting to irritate me, and I reckon that feeling was mutual. That irritation turned into burning hatred. That only got stronger after he moved out here. His snoring was like nails on chalkboard. He, he'd spit everywhere like he was a damn camel and the food got stuck in his teeth all the time but what really got under my skin was how he always reeked of onions all the damn time it was this disgusting oily smell that soaked into all the furniture but you want to know what weird thing was i ain't never used any onions in my cooking what does that mean a bird Ignore it. We'll never run out of dishes in this house. Ouch. I cut my finger. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a breaking weather update. A category 2 cyclone has been tr has been tracked approaching from the south. Meteorologists warned to expect heavy wind and rainfall in the coming days. I think that's an integral part of what's going to happen. We, Walt and I met towards the end of 1929. He was a little older than me, mighty handsome of course. He worked as a newspaper correspondent. But I couldn't tell you the name of the what paper it was. They have probably quit publishing it now anyways. My mother died in 1930. Walter and I got mar married in 1931. I got pregnant in 1933. They called it a topic pregnancy. And that was followed by miscarriage. I lost my child before I ever got to be a mother. Oh, that, that means really bad, doesn't it? Hello, who's calling? Are you gonna speak or what? You think this is funny? Okay. What is that thing? It's my inventory? I got a bag. Okay. Our car. Walter calls it the Mel Moth. I don't know why. I call it Moth. To me, it's more suitable name for a jalopy like this. Alright. Hmm. Open the letter. Leave it. Windows, okay. Cups, plates, glasses, half of them are chipped. Honey, I'm going to the city. I'll be back soon. I need to stop by the post office. What happened? Uh, I broke a plate. Well, that's okay. We'll buy a new one. We ain't got the money for that. 
You have enough for a plate. Finally, would you mind ignoring my suit? Ironing my suit. I think it's in the bedroom. Take the key. Okay, buy some milk on your way back. Not a problem. Alright, Han, I'm off. But I think I can be a piece of shit or not. I have a choice in the matter. Ain't anything in the basement I need right now. A jewelry box. Also, oh, there is a key to it. Walter doesn't like it when I enter his study when he ain't around. Reeks a cigarette here. Dusty bookshelf. Walter brought half of his library when we moved here. I didn't even bring win a winter coat. An old safe. Walter keeps the manuscript for his novel here. Better not touch it unless I want Walter to start bitching anyway. A crack. This house is falling apart. A piece of the ceiling gonna fall off these days and kill me in my sleep. I never like going outside to use the condom. Con common? Oh, sorry, I don't know what I just read. Oh, I missed my old apartment. Why did he move out here? What was the point of moving into a decrepit place like this? Should have sold off the land. A guest bedroom. As I understand it, Walter parents slept in the separate bedrooms. One of them a harsh 1910 traditions. Walter and I turned this place upside down looking for a key but no luck. Sure feels strange knowing I can't access a certain part of the house. Not like the house ain't big enough already. Something went wrong in the New York. I, I never found out what exactly. Walter fell into a pit of debt and dragged me down with him here. He left obscenely high deposit. We paid on our apartment, packed our bags and rented the cheapest rust bucket he could find. In the spring of 1947, he moved to the farm, to Walter's parent's old house. Ed I. Douglas Harris died of typhus back in 1927 and also we jumped off the bumpy life raft that was our former life and rushed into the unknown. Hmm, so much suspicious. Walter's suit. Are you done? All Walter's sin. His adultery was the least concern to me. Let's say he, his gambling affected my life in much more serious way. His adultery was pretty obvious. Walter hadn't touched me in months. I can't say I was too upset about it. Nonetheless, I knew one thing for sure. That ginger bitch Margaret sure did love her onions. Oh god, the husband is a cheery bastard as well. Great. So we are visiting memories, are we? What the hell is this thing? What am I doing? Oh, that's what I'm doing. Don't get to my egg. I know it's unfertile, but none of your bullshit is getting to it. I had the one that spawned next to it. And are tired. Alright, let's see what about this one. I felt trapped. I was suffocating in this cramped farmer's paradise. I could feel the noose tightening around my neck. I went to the bank. So, can you state our profession? Can you state your profession, ma'am? Uh, I'm an anthologist by trade, but for now, I, I just run the house mostly. On, uh, excuse me, how do you spell that? Yeah, a scientist, a kind who studies bird, birds, ah, I see. And how about the man of the house, ma'am? What does he do? Walter is a writer, wait. 
Walter Harris? You mean the writer? The affair with the killer. The black tulip. I see you're a fan, haha. <laughs> no, not me, I'm afraid. My wife, though. Why, she just adores his books. Who would have thought right here in our backyard? <laughs> anyway. Well, ma'am. I'm sorry to say this, but we can't give you a loan. Well, not to you anyway. But why don't you bring your husband around next time? I'm sure we could figure something out. I was hoping not to get my husband involved, I see. It's me who needs the money, not him. In that case, ma'am, if you urgently need money, then what's stopping you from taking out 30,000 and... What 30,000? Well, you know, just a moment. He shuffles through his paper. Well, well, well. Yes, oh. I beg your pardon, ma'am. This was my mistake. I just realized that 30,000 in, in insurance. What insurance? What 30,000? He pierced the sheet of paper. Life insurance, ma'am. Silly of me to have missed it before. But it looks like Mr. Harris's publisher took out an insurance, insurance policy in his name. Here, see for yourself. In the event of death and disappearance, yada yada yada. Oh, you can skip this part. The benef beneficiary will receive a lump sum payment of thirty thousand dollars. Looks like the standard contract as insurance goes. Anywho, I must apologize again. I didn't mean to cause any confusion. No, thank you. You've been a big help. Glad to hear it. In that case, I've been waiting for you and Mr. Harris to drop on by. All the best, ma'am. Oh, and do allow me to remind you that all the deposit and contribution are insured with us at... The clerk's words broke through his cracked, graceless lips and disappeared into thin air. $30,000. $30, Incredible sum, sum of money. It felt like the more I thought about it, the less I was able to comprehend how much money that really was. Walter, he hadn't even said a word, why not? I remember getting this strange feeling. I was weak and not at all there yet. But I felt it on the edge of my mind all the same. The moment I tried to catch it and pay attention to it, I left the bank and, dry, and the dry spring of wind of the outside world dispelled that feeling as if it was never there to begin with. Loretta, I must have parked over there. Is that the onion bitch? Yep, the onion rings. Ah, yes. Laura. Hey, Laura. Hello, Margaret. It's good to see you. How long has it been since we last saw each other? Come to think of it, I ain't seen Walter around much either. How is he doing anyway? Why don't tell me you lying? Ooh, wonderful! Don't let the intrusive thought win. Margo, hurry up. It's busier and... It's busier and a blind dog in a meat house in here. I don't know, man, what kind of era this was. Breaks over. Move those hip, girl. Alright, I'm coming. Any anyway, Valoretta? Oh, the girls and I gonna see a show on Saturday. You should come join us. Uh, I want you to talk. Margo. Looks like I'll stop by if I'm in the neighborhood. You don't mind, right? I gotta shoot. Margo, I'm keep... I'm keeping your tips. Alright, I'm coming for Chi. Christ's sake, I think. I don't know, man. She might not be cheating. Just saying. I lied, of course. I ain't no anthropologist. I never been and never studied nowhere. I'm just a habitual lie, I tell. I'm a working girl. I needed some way to survive and I moved to New York. I wanted to be a nurse but failed the exam twice. I washed the tiles at the diner, tried working as a waitress, tried working as a newspaper secretary, and believe it not, even work as a salon. I wouldn't say I enjoyed any of it, but the work is work. I need an I read an article about a female orthologist once. She was an ex expedition of some sort. I liked it. I even brought the bird of America. Ain't much of a bird lover though. Hard to love, harbinger of diseases. I, I think you're mistaking them for rats. It was hotter than six shapes of hell. I had the windows cracked all the way down. I could feel the sun burning my skin through the windshield. The storm of thoughts swirled in my mind. I didn't notice that I was running out of gas. This old bag of bowls chugged 30 gallons into a mile. But the lady luck smiled on me for the first time that day. The gas station appeared out of the blue. It, its concrete face rose from the middle of the cornfield and cracked and worn like the wrinkled face of some old woman. 
the funny thing was I can't say I've ever seen that gas station before. Even though this was the only road leading to home. We got booze. Feels like I drink more during prohibition than I did in my entire life. I ain't touched the drink since I was 32. Wait, what? But with every day I spend living on this farm, I regret that decision more and more. Anyone? Take it. Austin. The first side traveled by bus. Okay, station attendant. Afternoon, ma'am. How's the day treating ya? Could be better. It's too hot today. Yeah, ain't wrong there, ma'am. Almost 100 degrees out. Could you fill me up for three dollars? Sure thing. Anything else I can get ya? I don't even know what I want. If you allow me, ma'am, I may just have the cure for what ails ya. You do. You will improve rat poison. Even contains its own secret formula. The sucker will get rid of rats and mice. Whatever plaguing ya. Smells like almonds too. Holy shit. Guaranteed to work. All for only a dollar and ninety nine. I don't think the but you know what? You look like a diligent housewife, ma'am. Why don't you take a sample? On the house just for you. Oh well I assure you, ma'am. You will not be disappointed. Is he a devil? This is how it began, didn't it? I just did something I didn't want to. Nope, that's not what I'm supposed to do. What? Money. Hope. Oh, okay. So I have to select the positive words. Chance? Yeah. I think I did it. <sighs> Hi, Walt. It's hotter than the devil's armpit outside. No kidding, thought I was gonna melt. Ain't it a little early to be breaking out the wine? What are you smiling for? It's all done. What is? You mean, you finished your book? Yep. But that's, that's wonderful. Why didn't you? The publisher already gave me the green light. I sent them the initial chapters. I just, I don't want to jinx anything before it's set in stone. But they are saying, the folks from Metro Silver Mayor are interested. Might even turn it into motion picture, they said. Just imagine, starring Clark Gable. I thought he quit acting. Then Henry Cooper, who cares? That's not the gosh damn point. Hollywood, Laura. You're right, I'm sorry. Oh, Walter, I'm so happy. Good for you. Good for us, sweetheart. Can the wine wait a little? I'll get to, I get to fixing us a real nice supper. How about you cook us cook us up that steak, you know, I love. Honestly, I didn't expect it. For a moment, it felt as though everything could change. It was a flash of hope. Walter publishes his novel and we return to New York, to our apartment on 12th Avenue, just as if we, just as if we never left. And life goes back to normal. But still, he'd made a promises before. He'd already found another woman before I could start unpacking my damn suitcase. He, he's gambled us into ground when we already dirt poor. Why should I think of that? That'll stop in New York. No, something deep inside me, something strange has been triggered. I couldn't stop it. What do I do? So do I want to end up where the story was? Or is she going to kill him eventually anyway?
I'm gonna not gonna do it. Hey, how is it going? Ready, coming right up. That would be our last supper together. I told him I was leaving. Told him I knew about Margaret. Told him I couldn't live like that anymore. Wait, Walt didn't seem to be broken about it. You're making a big mistake. He said a mouthful of steak. But you know what? I feel like for the first time in my life, I actually doing something right. Wait, what? That night I couldn't sleep. The storm ended just as suddenly as it started. The weather cleared up. The cloud disappeared and the stars glimmered in the sky. It was the kind of thing you could only see out in a farm. I dreaded the thought of what I could have done, but I, I didn't, luckily. I decided not to take our scarce saving. Instead, I pawned the wedding ring and brought a bus ticket out to the west coast to California. I got a younger brother who lives there. Though we ain't see, seen each other for years, like a pioneer or some character from Steinbeck novel or the thousand who fell in victim to the Great Depression. I had no idea what I was waiting for me. I reckon some would condemn me for what I did. Maybe others would tell me it's too late to start over. That there's no use in running away from who you are. That you can't outfit, run the fate. But I say to hell with them. It's never too late to start living. I knew it wouldn't be easy. But I truly felt like there was a new beginning of all ahead of me. What a time to fall. Yourself, maybe. A new beginning? Well said. But it wasn't like that at all, Loretta. You know that. He's talking with his mouth full. So, the poison is in the steak regardless. The steak is delicious, thank you. Last time I ate this good was back in the Big Apple. You barely touched your I ain't hungry. Well... I ran into Margaret today. Did you? He clears his throat. Um, so how was she? Fatter than when I last saw her, if you ask me. You think so? Not like I'm the one to talk. I've certainly let myself go. But think about it. it's like to be in her shoes, Lo. Poor girl's been all alone. Ever since Clarence brought the farm. Gotta be hard for her and you. He points at he points his fork at Loretta. As a woman ought to empathize with her a little more. That's why you choose to soothe the grieving widow? Yeah, it's true, Margaret. I wanna know about the bank. Why didn't you tell me about an insurance policy? He continues to chew. You don't trust me one bit, do you? Walter, what did I do to deserve this? Why is everything we get all the shrouded in a mystery? Just figure it wasn't any of your concern. Sides. What if you ever decide to have me whacked, huh? Ha ha ha. It was the publishing house's idea anyway. They didn't fill me in on the details. Listen, I know you blame me for what happened to John. He slams his fist into the table. Nice fucking supper. You just couldn't help yourself, could you? Why, why'd you need to bring this shit up again? Why now? What is with you today? No, you're right. Let's just keep it bottled up inside. I'll hush, I'll be good a housewife. And you can keep fucking around with the ginger slut. Then everyone will be happy. Enough. I'm not listening to this shit anymore. And if you must know, I do. I do blame you. Oh, finally. The brave man comes out and say it. I've read the police report. You are such a hypocrite. L Laura. I had no idea you could be so, could be full of crap. I've read the... Walt? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, murder. Let's go. Throw him in the well. Walter looks like he's trying to say something. But only the sound of gurgling can be heard. As he slowly chokes to death. 
This is your fault, burning hell, Walter. I don't have any regrets of what I have done. I must admit, I don't like when people say honestly or to tell you the truth. It always gives me the impression they have been shamelessly lying to you up till that point. But there's something transcendental about murder, something beyond our understanding, despite how regular and natural it seems. Otherwise, why else would anyone do it? Oh, don't accuse a woman of being a liar when she doesn't know how to be honest with herself. Stillborn, like my first child, like a poet who speaks no languages, like a deaf, blind, and a mute person in the world of sound, color, and signs. I won't reach the truth with words. They can't give it shape. There's one truth I know, though Walter is dead. Dead. You don't like people, do you? I didn't say that, but truth be told, I didn't expect any good to come from them. I see um I see a moth. Do you think people want to hurt you? I think we are wasting our time here. Why is that? Look, I know how this works. First we look at some pictures together and have a nice little chat. Then tomorrow you dig into my brain with a metal rod. You're exaggerating. You're exaggerating. Logomotives have elevated suffering for great many people. In your case, however, I doubt it will be required. I like to believe that. Let's continue, shall we? Vagina? Well... Neither, actually. Closest thing I can see is... Uh, well, I don't want to say it or anything. Hmm, interesting. What is it? Your associative patron. My husband calls him tricks. But it was he who brought you here, wasn't it? So pay attention. It's just a splatter. What the hell? Show her eyes. Is something wrong? Yeah. There are just splotches. Not, ain't nothing to see in them. Whatever I do sees my only imagination. This ain't fair. I ain't done nothing wrong. Life isn't fair. At your age, it's high time you realize that. Oh, don't be so gloomy. How did the saying go in Italy under the rule of Bulgaria? Terror, murder, and bloodshed reign. Yet it ended up giving birth to Michelangelo, Da Vinci, and Rosinus. Ro I don't know what that is. In Switzerland, brotherly love, democracy, and peace were established for 500 years. And do you know what they produced? A cuckoo clock. All right. I woke up with an awful pain spreading through my whole body. It was, it came in waves like one blow after another. One eye was all swollen and watery, felt like it was gonna burst. Well, I wanted it to, not that it helped none. No, the pain was focused somewhere else. When I opened my eyes, the first thing I saw was a crooked, rusted nail sticking out of my foot went right through my own skin, so I tugged it free. Ah, son of a bitch. I was ready to howl, ready to scream at the top of my damn lung, but I couldn't muster was a whimper though. It was like a top of a metal nail was smiling up at me like some Cheshire cat. Okay, one more try. Stay calm, breathe, come on, focus. Holy fuck shit, goddamn porch, goddamn nail, why couldn't you hammer it like I asked? The hell is wrong with you, Walter? Trying to make it easier for me to finish you off? Hell, why am I even asking you? Ain't like you knew which end of hammer to use anyway. This was some wicked irony, alright? Oh lord, I can see the rust stuck in the wound. Damn, uh, ain't no time to dwell, alright, one more time. Again. Come on. The gaping wound stared back at me, an awful blood red gash. Last night felt like a bad dream about to fade into the memory, but still my ripe up 
muddy dress, my aching leg, the puddle of my own vomit, they all suggested otherwise. I need to get rid of those reminders as soon as I can. I'm gonna be sick. I think it's a rusted nail. Now what do you want me to do? Reminder of the last... Ah, what a mess. Vomit? Vomit. Are you gonna clean it? So this is the living room. So I take off the dress first. I'll think about the rest later. I think in my room, perhaps. Oh my head, my leg hurts too. I saw some pills in the bathroom. Can't take, can't take this any longer. Bingo! I knew you were in here somewhere. They expired a long time ago too. Should I? Take them anyway. What does it matter? Not like things can get any worse. What's gonna happen? Am I gonna throw up again? Worst thing is gonna be diarrhea. I think. Change. That's better. Now to get rid of this dress. Who the hell could that be? Oh boy, I'm gonna chop you into pieces. You look like you've seen better days. What happened? Mind calling out Walter for me? He's out back. Why don't you come in? Walter? Is Margaret? You in here? Did something happen? Oh yes. But don't you worry a little hell about it. You'll be joining him shortly. So long, Margaret. Ah, yes, do it. Do it more. Oh, I'm, I'm going the bad one. I'm just going to down the hell. I'm straight up helling this shit. My name is William Henry Carter. I have been in this country sheriff for the last three years. Early in the morning of August 12, 1947, we got a call from Harris Farm. Mr. Harris claimed that her husband, Ms. Mr. Harris, had gone missing. How old is Walter, ma'am? 45. And how long have you two been married? 16 years. Has he... Huh? The sheriff chokes back the urge to vomit. For the sake of decency, Loretta pre pretends not to notice. Pardon me. Has Walter gone missing before? No. What about the bloody shovel? This be the first time. Hot damn. Hangovers get worse every time. Feels like my head is about to explode. Well, you didn't. You did throw back to full. Well, you did throw back to full bottle by yourself. What did you expect? Not one bottle. Not a bottle and a half. Two fucking bottles, Bill. Fuck it. You got it. You have had it worse. Get your shit together, old boy. Remember what you were taught. When was the last time you saw Walter? Does Walter have any streaming features? So I am the playing as a detective, right? Uh, sorry, as a sheriff. When exactly did you notice that Walter was missing, ma'am? Yesterday morning. I thought he had gone to the city at first, but the car was still parked by the house. Then evening rolls around and he still ain't back, so I called you today. What if I choose to ignore the shovel? Loretta's standing there, arm folded. 
staring you down like she's fixing to ask you a question or simply challenge your authority. What a catch. Men don't just run away from women like her. Hmm. Got a queer look in her eyes, though. What's on your mind, sweetheart? Oh, I don't know where this guy is going, actually. So, anything else? Alright, the shovel it is. Is that blood? You saw a similar stain out in the hall. Someone tried to wash it off. But they didn't do a very good job. Smells like... Smells mighty strong. Something ain't right, Billy boy. Today's gonna be a long day. I can feel it in my bones. Wait. Oh, strange stain. What a weird smell. And what a shitty place. Everything here is giving me the heebie-jeebies. Stay calm, cowboy. Let's listen to what she has to say. Oh, let's go. Do your children live with you? Ain't got no children. No children, I hear. Just two of them in the big old house. Hmm. Shit, sure, feels like my head is about to burst. Pull yourself together, you know. The chick's up to something. Don't take your eyes off her. Did Walter have any health conditions? You're trying to... S you're trying to lim imply he's crazy? Well, no sir, my husband is right in the mind. Was he in the military? Yeah, he was. But he never did like talking about it. He said he spent two years on, on, booth, on a booth. Somewhere out in the Phillips writing propaganda. At least that's my understanding of it. You know, pamphlet about Hitler, Her Hero, Hito, and the like. I choose not to pray any deeper than that. I see. Steady? So this is Walter's steady. Yeah, he spent most of his day in here. Sheriff Sniffs. Has anything changed since he went missing? Hard to say. What about family? My family? No ma'am, your husband's. Oh well. He had he has a little sister over in New York City. Can't say we have ever been all that close. Don't suppose you have her number. I'm afraid I do not. The sheriff's mouth curves into a deep frown. May I ask what happened to your leg? Oh, just a scratch, that's all. Would you like something to drink? Wait, 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 wait. Am, oh, I'm... Who am I playing as? I don't know. This seems suspicious. Uh, I caught it on a nail. But ain't nothing serious. Ouch. You might want to go see a doctor about that anyway, ma'am. That is no laughing matter. Lots of folk die from it. I'll get a, a ride on it, Sheriff. Did Walter take anything with him when he left? A photo or maybe a postcard? Do you know if anything missing from the safe? Oh no, Walter keeps his manuscript in there. He didn't take those with him? I ain't sure, don't know the combination. Hum. Did Walter keep up any extensive correspondence with anyone? Any that you have aware of at least? Or maybe someone you just learned of recently? Um, well, Walter spoke with his publisher, of course, probably to some other writers as well, and his old war buddies, most likely. Mind if I take a look at the letter? This one? Stick the letter opener in his throat? No, please don't. The sheriff carefully studies the envelope. You should read them. Might offer you some clarity. Oh no. Sheriff, are you using this barn? That door is creaking up a storm. Mind if I take a look? No, wait. What in the... Freeze, lady. Wait, I can explain. Put your hands up where I can see them. Said, I said put him up. No, please. I can't do it anymore. Tan-skinned boys are all still living in your age. It's the middle of the century, after all. Concentration camp, nuclear holocaust. Who are they to judge you? It's a high time you master your own, uh, a few more desires. Now grow up. Get out. Get out from under the oppressive tongues. Throw off your shackles. Who knows, maybe you'll write your own memoir one Sunday. Who knows if you want to write up. Now come on and get up. Wow, I'm back here again. What happened? Yeah, mind calling Walter ain't home. Walter ain't home, ain't here. That's odd. How long is he gonna be out for? 
I ain't the secretary. He doesn't tell me anything. Margaret puts on a puppy dog face with her big beautiful hazel eyes. It softened Loretta's heart a little. When I didn't see him this morning, I thought he'd run away with you. So you, you know. About you and Walter? Come on, Margaret, I ain't blind. Don't worry. I don't hold grudges, especially not against someone like you. Really? Margaret's face break into a silly smile. The affair was eating her up inside. But Loretta's words seemed to lift the heavy load from her heart. Still, Loretta couldn't help but think. If a few niceties was all it took, the load could have, couldn't have been that heavy to begin with. There's no such thing as wrongdoing, Margaret. Only doing. Hand on my heart, I ain't go no clue where he's gone. His damn suitcase ain't even here. You know, Walter, maybe he got himself in the hot water again, or maybe he just ran off and left us both behind. Who can tell? Laura, I, I don't know what to say. I best get going. Well, that could have gone better. Probably still could have gone worse, though. At, at very least, I brought myself some time. Time to come to my senses, consider, think. Margaret may not all be all that smart, but she knows how to play dirty. The bitch is up to no good, plain and simple. Just a matter of time now. Alright, now for the manuscript. Gotta be in the study. You know what, I'm gonna leave it here. I'll see you all in the next episode of Loretta. Bye-bye.